By now you may have seen the viral videos going around of the new invisibility cloak material from Hyperstealth Biotechnology Corporation. Well, Hyperstealth was kind enough to send us some early samples of the material to try out ourselves, and it works as advertised, refracting light around target objects and obscuring them from view without the need for a power source. Now let's cut right to the chase and get into how it works, how it's made, and what it could mean for the military and the world at large. What we have here is version one of the material known as Quantum Stealth. So far, Hyperstealth has filed patents for more than a dozen different versions, each with its own unique optical properties. Version one is the jumping off point for these later versions, but version one itself is actually something you're probably already familiar with. It's a thin sheet of plastic with cylindrical ridges on one side called a lenticular lens. This technology has been around for decades, most commonly used to create holographic images, like this album cover that lives on my refrigerator. Version one of Quantum Stealth is the same material, just without any picture printed behind it. They even make the same scratchy sound. Listen. I wanted to learn more about the later versions of Quantum Stealth and how they improve upon version one. So I spoke to the man behind the material, literally. Guy Kramer, president and CEO of Hyperstealth Biotechnology Corporation, who is no stranger to stealth. I develop camouflage for militaries around the world and I've been doing that since 2003 and we have six million uniforms that have been issued with our patterns. Guy shared with me how to make the prototype for version two, which is two pieces of version one back to back with a thin layer of water or oil in between. A lot of people are getting very excited about what they're seeing with version one and, and I have to say that version two though is, is the big deal here. I took a crack at making version two myself and it came out decent. Version two preserves more details in the background than version one, but objects farther away get flipped. That can be attention grabbing when you have something moving across the background and suddenly it looks like it's going the other direction. Putting two version twos together to create version three solved that problem. Versions four, five, and six are various combinations of lenticular lenses that create repeating images that could be useful for hiding larger objects. And later versions include camouflage patterns printed into the materials and different orientations of the lenses that allow the scrambling of targets positioned much closer to the material. By now you might be wondering, why isn't this material classified if it's for the military? It was actually my shareholders that sat me down at, a, at an annual general meeting and said, you've been promoting this material to the military since 2010. You've done 40 demonstrations around the world and you haven't made a dime from this material. It's time to secure the intellectual property before someone else does and it's time to commercialize this and, and take it to market. It, I'd probably given an extra two years to the military that they didn't deserve to try and vet this. And uh, in the end, while my concerns are, are still valid, how is it gonna be used negatively, the criminal element? They were totally right. By this point, the military applications of the technology are clear, but the potential usefulness of this material doesn't stop there. We've got the solar patent, we've got the light bending patent, we've got a laser splitting patent where I can split a laser into millions of parts which can be used for LIDAR, which are lasers that operate like radars and they're used on self-driving cars. So huge resolution improvement uh, will increase safety for the, the vehicle, the pedestrian, any animals that are down the road. Obviously it's gonna have military applications as well. You'll be able to see the battlefield like you've never seen it before. And then the fourth patent is uh, a holographic-like display system. While these demonstrations are impressive, Guy tells me that once Quantum Stealth is able to be properly manufactured, the backgrounds will appear clearer, anti-reflective coating will make them more useful outdoors, and you won't have oil or water dripping out the bottom onto your hands. They're what I call crude prototypes. My guess is we're probably looking at a year or less before we start to have commercially viable or military viable products. Do you think Quantum Stealth is going to be a game changer? Let us know your predictions down in the comments. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'm your host, Jesse Orl. See you next time with the fam.